Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. to Bois, Bois. Uh, King of the Hill Rewatch Podcast. I am Mike. And I'm Rusty. Rusty, uh, I think you said what I was thinking before we started here. I cannot believe we're like halfway through season two already. Yeah, uh, we're halfway se- through season two and a little earlier before this recording took place. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is uh, Saturday, uh, August the 13th. Uh-huh. And uh, I posted a little earlier that we're going to try to pump out. We're going to we're going to test run it and just see how it goes. Yeah. And we're going to give you guys uh, a Monday episode and then we're going to cap it off and then give you guys a Friday episode. That way you got something to listen to in and out of your out of your week. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping that you guys enjoy that. Uh, We uh, I spent a (laughs) few hours here earlier today researching and doing all my color coding and all that stuff to all the scripts yeah for the scripts yeah Yeah. um but hey let's uh let's see see if uh, people respond yeah we uh we hope you guys enjoy uh extra content yeah all right so we are season two episode 11 the unbearable blindness of laying yep uh that's a weird title and and actually uh the writer of this episode which you'll appreciate is Mm -hmm. paul lieberstein oh cool Paul Lieberstein actually wrote this oh, and, Toby. uh, and, and you get, uh, the, the TV famous TV guy, uh, Carl, Carl Reiner. Yeah. Uh, the one who created, uh, the Dick Van Dyke show. Carl Reiner is, yeah, is uh, one show. of the funniest men that's ever lived. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he was, um, he was there during the Milton Berle years and your show of shows and, um, all throughout the seventies, eighties. Yeah. He was, Doesn't he have a son that acts too? Yeah. His son is Rob, uh, Rob from, Rob uh, all in the family. Okay. Director of spinal tap and yeah, many, yeah, yeah, many yeah. other things. Yeah. All right. So we are starting, uh, this is our, is this our first Christmas themed episode or like that takes place in Christmas or that was I there one think in of. season one? I don't think there was one in season one. I don't think there season was. Season one is really short. So yeah. I don't think they made it through the full, all the way to Christmas with that yeah. season. So we kind of start off with uh, everybody decorating for Christmas in the neighborhood. Uh, my favorite is Boomhauer, who just takes a wad of lights and dumps it on his on his windowsill. Yeah. <laughs> and then just kind of walks away. Just a string of lights. Yeah. yeah. We go over to the Hill House, and there's Hank putting up his lights. And, of course, all of his are perfectly symmetrical. They're, they're level, yeah, I would assume. In, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, Peggy comes out the door while he is uh, finishing up his lights. And she says, come on, Hank, your mom's flight arrives in a half hour. So this is the first time we're meeting uh, Hank's mom, right? Yeah, Tilly. Yep. Yeah, it's the first time we meet her. Uh, and Hank is, uh, of course, he's in building mode. And so he's like, hold on, I got to do a color check. Let's yeah, he's see. doing like a Tim the Tool Man check on it. You yeah, know, he's like red, blue, green, white, red, red blue, blue, green, green white. white. And uh, uh, Peggy interrupts him and uh, asks him, you know, aren't you excited to see your mother? And he's like, of course I am. I haven't seen her in two years. Two years. Two years. He hasn't seen his mother. And uh, he goes, you know, it's really not her. It's a boyfriend that I'm worried about. Mm. And so um, 
you know, we know. I guess that would be weird. I, I don't know how it, it would because, be because my parents have been married, you know, my entire life. They're still married. So yeah. I don't know how weird it would be to see your 60 plus year old mother yeah. with another man. Yeah. I don't know. I think it would be. It would be weird. Yeah. I, I the same <laughs> deal for me. I mean, my parents have been together for, for 1000 years. And so yeah, it'd be so odd. I have, I have no friggin' clue what that would be like. Um, but he hasn't seen her in two years. And so yeah. they, uh, they are at the airport. Uh, they're ready to pick up Tilly and her new, her new bow. And, um, you know, uh, Peggy's like, uh, you know, it's about time you got used to this, Hank. Your mother told you almost a year ago that she had a boyfriend. So she's had a boyfriend for a year. Yeah. So he, it's not like something that. No. And then him being a grown man, I know it'd be weird to see your mom with somebody else, but yeah. it really doesn't have to be this big of an ordeal. I don't think it's that big a deal. I mean, he's in his 40s. <laughs> that big of, yeah. You know? yes, but then again, you're talking to a guy or talking about a guy that that uh, had cotton for a dad. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right. as we see in a flashback here, emotional in a damage. Oh my god, yeah, that's as, what it is. <laughs> as we see here in a moment, it was rough. So uh, she's telling him, you know, it's, it's been a year. He, and Hank's like, well, she said, "Gentleman, friend." I didn't know it was the same thing. Come on, Hank, you knew it was the same damn. Thing. <laughs> he said, "I thought they'd just sit and have tea and talk about how good the tea is." You know, not too hot, <laughs> <laughs> not too hot. Yeah, and she said, well, you know, I've never heard your mother so happy. Come on, just give this guy a chance. And and uh, Hank's like, why? He's just going to use her like a footstool like Dad did. And now we go to that flashback. Yeah, I, I love the is. muted color yeah. on the flashbacks that they do. And <laughs> Cotton is literally sitting there with a cigar, got his feet up on, on Tilly's back, back yeah. as she's rubbing Rub -a -dub -dub -dub, the floor. I think I'm in love. Oh, my God. And then and Peggy it, assumes that he's exaggerating. Right. She said, you know, oh, Hank, you're exaggerating. And he's just <laughs> he's like, like oh, really oh, deadpan. I don't think uh, so. Not really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he, he sees his mom coming out, and she's struggling with the two the two bags. And he goes, look, she's carrying both bags, and he's nowhere to be found. At, this is gate three, by the yeah. way, that she's coming out of. And uh, so he's assuming that just like Cotton, he's making her do all the work. Um Peggy is the first one to greet her. She says, uh, hello, Tilly. How was your flight? And then we get from Tilly. And do we know who played Tilly? Uh, no, but it won't take me long. All right, you looked that up. But she uh, she was like, well, it was nice, except that we asked for no meat, and they served us meat, and we just can't eat meat since Gary's bypass. And then she sees Hank, and she says, oh, Hank, it's so good to see you. And then they give the Hill family handshake. Which I thought was really odd. Well, <laughs> she's actually, uh, let me uh, interject real quick. She's actually yeah. voiced by three people over the course of the show. Oh. But at this current time, she is voiced by none other than the one and only Tammy Wynette. Uh, for real? Yeah, I did not oh, know. Well, wow. because when I'm looking on the the episode guide or whatever that I use on the, on the internet, yeah. it doesn't say anything about that right there, that Tilly is... That's really fantastic, though. You have to go look for that. That's Love crazy. Tammy Wynette. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one uh, also, this particular episode also won the uh, 1998 Golden Reel Award for Best Sound Editing. Really? For television animated Best Sound too, Editing. Whatever that is. I've never even heard of that award. <laughs> that's, like, but. that's like an uh, award ceremony they have in a basement somewhere, you know? Those, yeah. These poor guys that get the technical awards. I always, I always hated that, like, during the Academy Awards. They'd say, yeah. earlier in the week, we gave out all the technical awards, and it shows these poor people in tuxedos shoved in a basement somewhere, and they're yeah. all giving each other awards. It's like, I, I don't understand why you... It, especially in today's day and age, if you didn't have those technical people, you wouldn't be making movies. I no, mean, you wouldn't look at all, all the superhero no. stuff and all that. That's all technical people. It's I don't know if you've seen in front of credits computers. lately, but they are jam-packed. Oh, the credits? jam yeah. Well, and then you got some that... Yeah, the, there's so much animation on the credit. Like you're saying, there's just so much animation oh, yeah. at the end of the movie. Yeah. And then they, they have all like the world. I mean, it's, ten minute, it's amazing. Then they have like whole 10 minute animated sequences when the movie's over. And they've done one of the the, the smartest things I've ever seen is is they make you stick around for all the credits now because everything's got a freaking mid credit some, scene, after credit yeah. scene. We went to see Thor the other night and uh, we stuck around. And at the end, uh, it was one of the most disappointing credit scenes I've ever seen. Great movie, though. So they're giving the Hill family handshake, uh, and uh, it goes on a little too long for Hank. And so he's like, Mom, we're in public, one hand only. And she says, well, I've missed you. He says, well, thank you very much. <laughs> it's yeah. just, just so cold. Uh, so uh, Peggy pipes up, and she says, uh, Hank and I cannot wait to meet your new man. Uh, we didn't know how to spell his name, so we didn't get a stocking for him. 
She says, oh, don't worry. I'm sure he won't even notice. Uh, he's Jewish, and uh, they never did that in his family. Okay. So um, here is something that that catches me every time they mention the fact that he's Jewish or they mention his Jewish name. It is amazing to me how they pause assume you're going to think that people in Ireland have a problem with, with Jewish people. And then they have zero problem with anything. They don't even mention it. You know, they're they're, they're so complimentary, you know? Uh, so she, uh, uh, Hank, I I just don't remember. I just, it's, it's weird for me. I mean, to do people still do that? Like, Right around and they're like introduce people like oh yeah this is so and so oh he's Jewish <laughs> this is my Jewish or friend. hey uh, you know this is so and so this guy's you know he's Catholic <laughs> I don't know man I in this in this polarized world we live in I probably probably worse than that now uh, Hank pops up and says uh, did they carry suitcases in his family or does he think that's woman's work like dad did and he's referring you know back to Cotton uh, she says Hank Gary is nothing like Cotton. Uh, he's got a big heart, and of course, the doctor's called it enlarged. I enlarged. thought that was a great yeah. joke. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a good one. And then here comes Carl Reiner or Gary. Uh, you flush, and where does it go? Ah, you must be Peggy. I the my favorite part is their matching track suits. <laughs> I just love how they're both yeah. wearing track suits. Well, there, so yeah, you know, they're they're only going to come from one of two places: Arizona or Florida. Sure, sure. Peggy says, uh, "Yeah, that's right. I'm Peggy. It's such a pleasure to meet you, Mister Mister Kasner." And uh, he says, Mr. Kasner, that's my father. Gary, it's, my it's father. Gary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hank, I recognize you from your baby pictures. I'm glad to meet you at least. Boy chick. Boy chick. Very, very Jewish kind of uh, common uh, colloquialism for somebody like a, a friend or a, a oh, person. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yiddish. He goes, yeah, yeah the Yiddish uh, area. Uh, he goes and gives Hank a big hug. And Hank's like, oh, hey, let go, let go. Uh, and Gary, who I'm assuming has never met a stranger, uh, probably never s- yeah. says, uh, never, never, you'll never get away. And then, uh, they're the, uh, the next scene we see they're back at the, at the Hill household. Uh, and Hank is, uh, telling, uh, his mom that, uh, he'll put her stuff in the den with Luann and Gary. I put a cot in Bobby's room for you. Uh, and then Gary and his mom are a little confused. He's like, no, 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 no. Why move everybody around? Tilly and I can sleep out here in the living room. Hank's like, no, I don't yeah, think so. Yeah, he's really uncomfortable with yeah. that. Yeah. He's really, really uncomfortable. It, it reminds me of like having a sleepover for your kids or something. And, yeah. You know, all girls and some guy shows up or whatever. And, you know, you got to you gotta put one in here and one in there. Uh, and so Gary's confused. He's like, why didn't this couch open up? And he says, yeah, but... Uh, and then his mom pipes up and says, you know, don't tell me that you're uncomfortable with us sleeping in the same room. And Hank's like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. I didn't have that thought, mom. You put that thought <laughs> in my is, head. Which is BS. You know he did. But now That's, that it's that there, the you leave problem. me no choice. Yeah. He said, I'm sorry. And so uh, uh, <laughs> he has separated the two. One is in, for some reason, Bobby's room. Uh, yeah. And, and the other one is uh, sleeping in Luann. Uh, we go back to the alley, uh, and, uh, Hank is griping about the fact that, uh, he has to drive all the way to Houston to have Christmas lunch with his dad and then drive all the way back here to have Christmas dinner with his mom and him. He calls him, doesn't call him Gary, just says him. Bill's like, uh, why do you keep calling him him? I find that odd. He said, I call Mr. Kasner, him keeping it nice Mr. and formal. Kasner, Kasner. That's right. And then it's Dale yeah. that says, Kasner, Kasner, and then you get that long pause again. He is goes, that is German? that German? <laughs> he says, it's Jewish. Another long pause. You, yeah, hear the, you, you actually hear the birds, hear the birds chirping. chirping. Yeah. yeah. And he goes, so he's Jewish. And then uh, Hank, once again, assuming, I guess, that Dale is going to have a problem with that. Yeah, Dale. He says, he's Jewish. <laughs> and, then, and then Dale goes, there's uh, nothing wrong with that. In, in and, and of, itself. of itself. Yeah, in and of itself. And, and then Bill is the first one to pipe up and go, is he funny? Seinfeld's funny. <laughs> yeah, Seinfeld's funny. <laughs> it just assumes they all know each other. Uh, and, and Hank tells him, no, Seinfeld's funnier than Gary. And then Dale, here he goes, I'll bet Gary Kasner is it? I bet he's funnier than Cotton. Cotton yeah, and then, uh, and then I love this part boom. right here. Boom, <laughs> Cotton ain't no funny at all, man. Dang old Pete O.W. camp <laughs> about putting dang bamboo shoots on about his dang, ding, dang old fingernails, ding, man. Dang. Don't freak me out about that. 
Yeah, that's fantastic. And then uh, Hank pipes up and says, you know, I thought my mom had learned her lesson when she had the good sense to dump my dad, but now she's gone and found another guy to treat her like a bellboy. Like a bellboy. Bill laughs and says, Whoopi Goldberg's funny. <laughs> Yeah, Whoopi like that's Goldberg's the, like funny. That's one of yeah, the not only, even relevant to the conversation. That's one of the only Jewish she names funny, he can though. think of. He says, you know, that man won't even eat steak, says Hank. Now, what about that? Hell, my boss had a bypass surgery every year, and he eats all the damn steak he wants, which yeah, is not that's great. That's not good, yeah. But okay. Waste of a bypass. Bill, Bill, thinking he knows something, says, uh, that's not the reason Gary doesn't eat steak, Hank. It's because the cow is sacred to his people. <laughs> <laughs> and Dale's Dale. like, no, you're thinking of the Hindus. Hindus the yeah. pig is sacred, sacred to, to the, the Jews, Jews, which is, is not, not a thing yeah, either. Not either. <laughs> and Bill, he says, uh, I wouldn't myself uh, ever join a religion that restricted my diet. I don't want to get into heaven that way. <laughs> I don't want to get into heaven that way. Uh, the guy's an idiot. Uh, so now, uh, we see Bobby and, uh, Gary getting ready for bed. Uh, they're both putting on their pajamas, which look very similar, very similar. for some reason. Hey, we have the same build. Yeah. Here. Bobby's like, we have the same build. He goes, yeah, I guess so. But your skin is a little tighter, which is a weird comment, but okay. Uh, he says, are you a war hero? Like my biological grandfather? He goes, oh, no, no, no. A hero. I spent most of Korea in a submarine deep in the Pacific. I didn't see much action. Bobby's like. But when you flush on a submarine, where does it go? He says, ah, you I like. And he, Bobby, yeah, you, this is... I like. Has yeah, Bobby you. not done the high pants, what are you talking about? What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, he's already done it. He's already done it, right? Yeah, he's already done it. So it, it kind of confuses me that he's so enthralled by this way of speaking. Yeah. You know, because he's like, what are you talking about? But what I guess he didn't do the backwards about? talk or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He Double say, speak. He says, you I like instead of I like you. That's funny. I like that. Wait, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> so, that I like. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, oh, that I like, yeah. yeah that I like. Uh, we see Hank, he is tossing and turning in the bed. Uh, finally, at 1.20 a.m., he gets up. Uh, he finds Gary on the couch munching on uh, some sort of snack. Uh, he says, good, good, you're up. What is this I'm eating? Some kind of delicious cutlet? Okay, once again, a little confused. They couldn't eat meat on the plane. But now Gary's up eating what we find to be chicken fried steak. I guess in cold chicken fried steak from the refrigerator. Yeah. So uh, he says, uh, he said, what is this that I'm eating? Some kind of delicious cutlet? Hank says, nice chicken fried steak. He says, well, I'm going to count this under chicken. So I guess he just can't eat red meat. Yeah. I guess that's the big deal. He goes, I'm allowed to have chicken. And he tells him, sit down, let's talk. Hank, your mother mills, means a, he starts telling him, you know, about the relationship he has with Tilly. He says, you know, your mother means a great deal to me. It's been a long time since I've had these kind of feelings. Hank, of course, cannot handle this. This is too much uh, personal talk. And so he launches into, oh, sorry, uh, it's a bad time. This is my program. Turns on the TV. And we get a uh, televangelist. We get a televangelist. Yeah, yeah. one of those uh, slap you in the forehead and heal you your problems. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Gary uh, is like, uh, you believe in this stuff? And Hank's like, yep, that's right. It's my favorite thing. So please don't talk to me about anything else right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Hiccups be gone. <laughs> that's the funniest yeah. thing. Like the guy on the TV is trying to get rid of the hiccups yeah. from one of these guys. It's just nuts. It's not even like healing like a, a broken leg or nothing no. like that. It's not blindness. Curing it's not a broken cancer. leg. It's not, you know, it's, it's hiccups. Uh, and I love what he does. He goes, uh, well, I guess there's nothing we can, here comes me gone. He comes back and just yells at the guy. Uh, so we get, uh, the next morning, uh, in the kitchen with Peggy and Peggy is saying, uh, I was thinking of picking up a menorah. I mean, yeah, the way she said she it was says, weird. Yeah. Menorah. So weird. Menorah. So we can celebrate Hanukkah and make Gary feel at home. Hank's like, what? She says, oh, I just think it'd be nice to honor his traditions, too. Bobby could blow out all the candles on Hanukkah Eve and make a wish. Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't think is is the tradition, but that's fine. Uh, Hank says, no, he's the new guy. Why should we change everything for him? He hasn't made any offers to change for me. And then he says, Bobby, are you going to the game with us? And <laughs> Bobby, of course. Basketball, is, <laughs> I can take or leave. Yeah, I can take or leave. Uh, and then Peggy confused. She's like, honey, didn't you mean to say I can take or leave basketball? And Bobby's like, no, mom, Gary taught me this. It's a cool way that people from Arizona talk. Well, that was one of the, the trivia tidbits I had was that that's a Yiddish accent. Yeah, yeah definitely. And that's what, uh, Carl Reiner sounds like 
Yeah. I mean, it is Carl Reiner that plays that guy. Yeah. That's Carl Reiner's voice. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Carl is, uh, Carl is, is, uh, I, he I wasn't, the weird thing is like Carl Reiner back in the fifties and stuff, you know, he was the boss on Dick Van Dyke. Yeah. Um, yeah. and he was he, back then, honestly, being Jewish wasn't necessarily a good thing. And so they were very, um, like white bread, you know, just no, no accent, no anything like you couldn't, you couldn't tell. And it was too bad because, you know, shoving all that stuff under the table at that well, point. Well, it's funny you say that because uh, Carl Reiner actually, uh, he didn't identify as Jewish. He identified as a non-believing, non-believing atheist uh, since his youth. But uh, really? he gave support to Jewish customs and stuff. Like he did give Rob Reiner a bar mitzvah and stuff like that. And uh, much of the production work was uh, traditional. It was all like regards to like censorship and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. It was uh, real like Jewish traditional, but he yeah. he identified as a non-believing atheist. Hmm. I did not realize that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bobby asked Peggy, uh, you want I should teach you? <laughs> you want I should teach you? <laughs> and then uh, Hank, he's, he's kind of fed up with this. He's like, Bobby, just get your butt in the car. Uh, Luann is very upset. You see very little of Luann in this episode, but, uh, she is yeah, very upset. Very Luann heavy this she one. says, let's go, let's go. If I miss tip off, I don't know which team is going for which basket. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. Um, then, uh, Hank's mom comes in and Hank says, mom, you're not dressed. Uh, didn't somebody tell you four of Arlen's players made regionals? And she says, I think I'll, <laughs> I think I'll pass. I think I'll pass. He says, all right, fine, whatever. I'm just saying, an eighth grade like this that only comes along once, once in a, a decade. decade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that shows you, uh, that's kind of funny because that's like, that's how hardcore some people are about Texas sports. Oh, yeah. And they're, and they're like, you know, there's people that uh, I graduated eighth from this. Grade well, well, basketball. Th- there's there's people I know that still go to my alma mater's football games that have been going to the football games since I was in high school. Oh, I don't know. And I've been that. out of school for like almost 20 years now. So they, yeah. were, they were sitting in school. Yeah. When, Watching football yeah. on Friday night, and they're still there oh, yeah. on the same yeah. Friday nights. Every Friday night since then, too. It's well, just they, crazy. It, it ends up being like a tradition, like a family thing, yeah. you know, where it's everybody goes. It. Yeah, that's just where you are on Friday nights. It's a I family was, tradition. I, I was just never, I don't know, I just never really bought into that. I mean, my kids played sports, and when they played, I would go see them and cheer for them and all that. But after they're gone, I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I'll keep up with like the scores and stuff, but actually, like sitting at a game, um, I just I'm don't good. care how well the Bearcats, you know, that are three cities over from me, do this year. I don't, <laughs> I, whatever. You know? Yeah. Uh, okay, so they all get into the truck. They're going to the eighth grade regional basketball game, I guess. And uh, we see Gary come in. He's he's still not dressed really. Uh, he's getting his his PJs and uh, he says uh, to to Hank's mom, "It's been a long night without you, puppy." which is kind of creepy. He calls her puppy. Yeah. Uh, she says, mister, it's been, a, certainly been a long hot night. And then, uh, he goes, I got your mistletoe right here, which is again, a little creepy, but, uh, you know, they, they love each other and that's great. Uh, we see the group, uh, is now in the truck. They're driving to the game. Uh, Hank, I love this. Hank says, uh, did you remember to bring the styrofoam finger? Uh, yes, Hank. She's like, yes, Hank. He goes, does it say number one on it? Yes, Hank. The basketball one? And then she sighed, <laughs> so, yeah. So how many damn film <sighs> fingers do you have? Every sport. If you've got a specific basketball He's got one for the shot putt. Finger. <laughs> He's got one for shot putt. Number one shot putt. <laughs> yeah, so they have to turn around, uh, come back and get the foam finger, uh, the specific number one basketball one. Uh, and, and Hank goes in to grab it, and he goes, huh, that's my mother's robe. Uh, there's just clothes all over the floor. And Hank's like, uh, as soon as I'm out of sight, he makes her do the laundry. Oh, wait, this is weird. It sounds like the dryer's on, but all their clothes are on the floor. And then you get, you hear this thumping, you hear some moaning. And then it happens. Hank looks in the room, and which is the kitchen, we find out. Yeah. Uh, and here's, here's the notes I wrote, right? Mm-hmm. Skin. <laughs> that was my first note. Oh, there was lots, lots, of, of skin. lots of skin. And you actually get to see Gary's tattoo, which the USS uh, trout. Yeah. So for the trivia for that, there's a, uh, it's a class of the, the particular SS trout too. the one, the tattoo that he has on yeah. it is actually uh, called a, uh, m- mini Balio class diesel electric submarine. Wow. It's a world war two vintage submarine. <laughs> 
no idea. It was, it was named was for specific. different species of fish. Really? So it's a, that's a type of fish, I guess. Huh. A balu. A ba- I don't know. I don't, okay. I'm not a fisherman. I'm not so, a tropical fisherman. So again, the the notes: skin, USS trout tattoo, and then there's mom's another one. lips. Ma- oh yeah, mom's lips. Uh, feet. I just wrote down feet, oh, feet. with a big exclamation mark. Uh, I wrote down uh, uh, his bypass scar, uh, the table shaking, salt falls on the floor. Well, there's something that you missed. Then the two necklaces yeah. swinging, and then the medic alert bracelet. And then there's something else that you missed. What I missed? So the door that Hank walks through yeah. to see them yeah. having sex in the kitchen, yeah. never see it again. Ever again. Oh, really? That's the one and only time he walks through that door. That door is never, ever seen again in the series. Oh, wow. The camera. No, I had no the idea. The camera looks at that angle. If you, if you think huh. about when you see the kitchen, usually usually you're seeing the kitchen facing like yeah, 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 the sure. window to see outside. Right. You're seeing you the generally the big never see sliding glass door. The, the, the door behind the, the oh, yeah. where the dining table and everything yeah. is. So that's the one and only time that you see that huh. from there on out. And that's a uh, shout out to uh, our fat guy, Artie. Artie. Uh, appreciate it, man. Nice job. Uh, and then we get Hank. Uh, <laughs> he just, it's, it's a, it's a total breakdown for Hank. You know, he, he sees white. Oh, he uh, goes nuts. Leaning yeah. off of the medic alert bracelet. And oh, crazy. My eyes have gone blind. And it's so odd. This oh, episode for man. me is kind of weird. Cause it's like, I mean, I know it would be traumatic to see, you know, your mom having sex, but... It hit him like a ton blind? of bricks, man. Hit go him like blind? a ton of bricks. So, that is a commercial break, and uh, we're going to take one as well, and we will be right back. From the host of the popular podcast, The Only One in the Room, Stash by Laura Cathcart Robbins is a propulsive and vivid memoir about the journey to sobriety and self-love amidst addiction, privilege, racism, and self-sabotage. Best-selling author Holly Whitaker calls it an irresistibly delicious story. And MacArthur Foundation fellow and best-selling author Kiese Lehman says Stash is emotionally riveting. Buy Stash by Laura Cathcart Robbins now wherever books are sold. Looking to start a business? You'll need a registered agent to receive legal notices and documents on your behalf. Look no further than Universal Registered Agents. Our team of professionals will ensure you never miss an important document, and we can even help you form your business with services like entity formation and document filing. Plus, we'll help you switch to our service for a lower cost and pay the change fees. Trust Universal Registered Agents to help your business succeed. Contact us today to learn more. As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy. Available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba da ba ba ba. All right, so we are back. Uh, Hank finds his way back out to the truck. Uh, fumbles around with the keys, fumbles around getting in the door, still has the foam finger on his hand, yeah. which is an ongoing joke, which I love. Uh, Peggy says, Hank, is something wrong? You look very strange. He says, well, I, I guess, guess I'll have to take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, can't I can't anything. see a thing. Yeah. He's gone completely blind. Um, and and I'll, I'm just going to mention this once because I, I'm afraid I'm not going to mention it as we go. I love the googly eyes they gave Hank. Oh yeah, they widened his eyes out and just gave him dots. He's just got those little dots, and one yeah. of them's up here, and the other one's, one down, one's there. down there. Yeah. Oh, it's it's wonderful. It is. No, that's really good. I like that. That was really funny. And so we get uh, Peggy reacting. She goes, "Oh, good lord!" And then Bobby, blind, he's gone now. Blind, he's gone now. <laughs> he's still got this Yiddish accent. He's still, yeah, still trying out the Yiddish accent. So now we're at the doctor's office. Uh, I guess they dropped everybody else off or everybody else got out of the truck and went straight to the doctor's office. So I guess they missed that eighth grade uh, regional basketball game. Yeah, probably so at this point. (laughs) And the doctor, the doctor is zero help here, by the way. He's like, uh, I'm really stumped. And this is Stephen Root doing the voice of the doctor, I'm assuming, because it's certainly who it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says... Uh, Very yeah, noticeably so, I think. Yeah. He says, your eyes respond to light. The retina is in its place, and there's no sign of stroke. Mr. Hill, I know I've asked you this before, but you didn't poke yourself, did you? 
He says, no, I just went blind for no reason. That Why is it so hard for you to <laughs> yeah. understand? And then Peggy pipes up with, what kind of doctor are you anyway? We do something. What are all these machines for? What about that laser right there? Use that laser on my husband right now. And the doctor's like, all right. <laughs> it's yeah. just, it's just, okay, let's put the laser in his eyes. And Hank is like, no, 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 wait, I don't need a laser. Look, what if somebody saw something really, really wrong? Could that affect someone's vision? The doctor's like, well, you know, something out of place was something where it shouldn't be. And Peggy's like, did you leave the microwave open? Did you leave the microwave, microwave door open, open again before, before the, the ding? Before the ding, yeah. <laughs> he's, Hank's uh, like, uh, no, just tell me it's possible. And then the doctor says, well, you know, there's a temporary disorder, hysterical blindness. He said, if somebody sees something like horrific, like a brutal murder or that sort of thing, they can lose their sight. He goes, here, I got a couple of books on it. You can take them. I don't need them. <laughs> He's got a bunch of books in his office. A bunch of he books. Need, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't need them. He says the condition could last a few days, a few weeks. Uh, the key to getting better will be to confront what you saw and deal with it. Which, ugh. and then he still tells him. He stills like, well, unless of course you actually <laughs> poke yourself in the eye. Well, whatever you're ready to admit it, you can come back and I'll fix you right up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now uh, Hank and Peggy are driving home. It's really weird to see Peggy driving the truck. Yeah. But uh, Peggy says, Hank. Well, now I remember that one episode. She drove the truck. She, uh, uh, the boys took the car and she took the truck to go get oh, the shoes on yeah, the you're right. Rumitanya episode. You're right. You're right. Uh, she says, uh, I'm surprised she's, I remember that. That was actually pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it pretty, was good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's, she's quizzing Hank. You know, why can't you tell me what you saw? He said, I can't say. He said, You want me to lose my voice too? And so yeah, she's, he's, she's she, tripping again, you know, Peggy's trying to help with, in her very demanding way. She's like, uh, how can I help you get better? If you don't tell me what caused this, he says, so don't help me. I'll just be blind. I don't, yeah, care. I don't care. She says, is it a thing or a person or a vegetable? <laughs> Hank, just tell me he goes a person. Ah, stop it. Stop asking me. She's, uh, she's like, well, when we get home, you can, you can show, show me, me on, on a, a doll. doll. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, no, all right, I'll tell you, but you can't say anything to anyone. I saw mom and Gary in the throes of, uh, activity. activity. And what's and amazing. Like how he says it is all activity. <laughs> but what's amazing is she knows what the hell he's talking about. She, uh, she's yeah, like, you know. that's it. I can't believe you dragged me to a medical doctor for that. Well, you get your sight back right now. You big baby. <laughs> Like it's just going to pop back because she's yelling at him. Yeah. He said, come on, Peggy. It's not that easy. How would you feel if you saw your mother on the kitchen table in the arms of a 65 year old, year old man, man wearing nothing but a submarine <laughs> tattoo? She goes, oh, I eat breakfast on that table. <laughs> That's the thing she's most worried about. Is the table, which I would be probably more worried <laughs> well, about the table too. myself, yeah. too. They are, uh, they, they arrived back at home. Uh, Lou Ann wants to know, or, or his mother wants to know what, what did the doctor have to say? Uh, he goes, well, I poked myself in the eye. It's the darndest thing. She goes, well, what about the other eye? He says, well, it seems the other eye compensates for shutting it's, itself down. It's yeah, one of nature's wonders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so Gary's like, my entire life I've been reading psychology today. I've never heard of a sim- sim- sympathetically shutting eye, down. An eye. Good Lord. I've never heard of an eye sympathetically shutting down. And then he goes, I got a magazine you ought to read. It's called the Ten Commandments. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so Gary, he's like, who's he talking to? Uh, Hank, should I come over there? Because Hank's like looking in the wrong direction while he's yelling you at want, him. I should come over there? <laughs> and then Bobby said, Bobby mimics it and he goes, that is so that Arizona. Is so Arizona. Uh, so we are uh, now uh, with all the boys. They are uh, sitting there trying to watch TV. Hank's still got the damn foam finger on. Yeah. Which I know is just odd. Dale and all the boys uh, find it pretty funny that uh, Hank can't see. Uh, he goes, uh, I know what your, finger, what your problem is, Hank. Your finger's too big. That's why he poked your eye out, <laughs> yeah. which is great. Uh, Hank's like, ha, ha, ha. He's, and then Bill, hey, Hank, what am I thinking? Ah, you can't see. You can't see what I'm thinking. Like that makes any damn sense. Like it makes any sense at all. Yeah. Uh, and then Hank, he says, uh, I'm not going to be blind forever. You know, and the second I see some ass, yes, I'm, I'm kicking, kicking it. it. Yeah, I like that. I like that one. <laughs> now, no more That's making funny. fun of my blindness. Bill, <laughs> Bill says, okie dokie. Bring, bring, bring. Fun for you, Hank. Hands, hands him, him his boot. Shoe. Yeah, yeah. He chunks it across the room. <laughs> he chunks it across. He says, joke's, joke's on, on you, funny, funny man. man. Throws it. And, uh, then Lady Bird takes off Jets. after it. And Hank's a- a- attached to Lady Bird. So that kind of backfired on him. Uh, and, and so, uh, now we're, we're, uh, making pancakes, right? Cookies. 
Cookies. So sorry. And then Bobby said, I like my I like them flat, press harder. Press harder. And then Peggy comes, comes in the Peggy. room and she gasps and clears the whole table off, throws all the dough in the trash, <laughs> grabs some chemical, sprays, sprays it, it all over the table, and then says, Now I wonder who wants to make some cookies. <laughs> yeah. So uh Hank is in there trying to shave. Uh, cuts himself. <laughs> he's got the googly eyes Bad, again. And he's cut. He's cut the whole side of his hair oh, off over my here. God, like his head his, looks terrible. His sideburns and everything. Are all yeah, gone. and so he puts a little toilet paper on his face, but he doesn't attach roll. it from the roll. Yeah. The whole thing's following him around. He finally just kind of breaks down and says, "Jesus, if you're up there, what I'd really like for Christmas is my sight back and a wrench set. set. Well, maybe I should, should be, be talking, talking to Santa, Santa about, that. about that. And the thing is, Gary's watching this the whole time. Yeah, he's standing he there the whole there. time in the corner. Yeah, yeah. So. We but are, you think if he was a an older gentleman, he'd probably had some brute or something. Oh yeah, you would think you could at least him. smell yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe that uh, that tracksuit makes some noise whenever he walks. Yeah, or the tracksuit or Ben Gay. Oh, Ben Gay, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, so now we are uh, the sweet smell of Metamucil. <laughs> we are back with the with the whole family. Uh, it's Christmas time. They are. Uh, gathered around the menorah and uh hank is sitting next to the tree uh like over in the corner everybody else is over by the menorah having fun they got their christmas sweaters on all yeah. that stuff uh and uh hank's like what what what's going on did somebody drop a dish uh and it's because they're over there messing with the menorah yeah, and blowing it out and all that other. stuff yeah uh, Peggy's like, okay, now we'll open the presents. Uh, and Hank, he, he just wants to pretend like nothing's happening. Yeah, I'll so, pass them out like usual. Yeah. And he starts feeling around down under the tree. He goes, oh, we got something square. Uh, did somebody uh, ask Santa, Santa for, for something, something square? square? <laughs> and uh, he gives it to Bobby. Here you go, Bobby. Yeah. And, uh, uh Lou Ann's like, Hey, that's for me. And Bobby says, oh, that's for that. He said, Bobby. <laughs> And then Bobby opens the bag and uh, or, or the box, and it ends up being a nightgown. And he says, "Yeah, he says, goes, I'm going to wear this when I get older. <laughs> when I get older." Uh, Hank uh, reaches down for the next one. He uh, goes, "Oh, there's a I heavy, a heavy one, here. one here." He knocks over the whole damn tree. So uh, then we see the tree is propped back up. Uh, they are uh, obviously they've cleaned up all the mess. And uh, Gary says, uh, oh, here's something for Peggy from Tilly and me. And Peggy, uh, she gets a book. She gets a, uh, a book, and she tells him how much she loves books. The book is called The, the Clown, Clown Did, Did it. it, Movie Comics so, from Buster, Buster Keaton, Keaton to Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. And then she goes, look, Hank, <laughs> like you can damn see it. And he goes, oh, I'm awake. So he's just over there nodding off. Yeah. And what do we have here? Oh, my goodness. Gary. Another mink coat for Hank. He pretends to hold up a can- Hank, yeah. uh, a mink coat for Hank. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, Hank. I know that's getting old. Yeah, that's great there, Gary. Yeah, just. <laughs> Thanks for turning my holiday into a Woody Allen special. I'm going to sit in the truck until it's time for me to go to my dad's. Where's my finger? <laughs> Which is using as a, a, a yeah. tool to find out where he's going. Yeah. So uh, he gets his finger and he goes outside and uh, Peggy has to apologize and uh, says, uh, Gary, he didn't mean that. And then she goes outside. Yeah. Uh, Hank is just wandering around outside, just running into things. He's got a bucket on his foot uh, because he's just stepping everywhere all wildly. She says, Hank, stop, Hank. You won't come back in for Gary or your mother. At least do it for yourself. That is a weird thing to say, right? Do it for yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought she was going to say, do it for me. She says, uh, the doctor told you it was psychological. If you run away from your problem, you never, you never get, get your, your sight back. back. And that makes yeah. sense, you know. You get to drive me to my dad's or not. And then uh, yeah. he was like, honey, I feel better already. As this is as they're driving. Well, what he assumes is him and mm-hmm. Peggy at this point. And he, he finds out that it's actually Gary driving him. Yeah, he goes, amen to that. And he said, uh, well, Hank goes, every block we put between me and the kitchen table is a load off my mind. Yeah. And then he goes, amen to that. <laughs> And so uh, uh, Hank is taken aback a little bit. He's, uh, Peggy, where's Peggy? Turn this thing around. He says, Peggy asked me to take you. My policy is give a woman what she wants. Hank's like, stop the truck. Let me ride in the back in the bed. He's just doing anything to try to get away from Gary. Uh, Gary says, uh, you know, don't be silly. You'll be more comfortable inside here. I'll tell you what you're passing. And then he's trying to make Hank feel better. Oh, this is funny here. This little rant he did about the 18-wheeler, a semi, a demi 
a couple of dozen wheelers. <laughs> Here we got a billboard. <laughs> they want us to buy some filing cabinets. Yeah. And Hank finally has had enough. He's just like, shut up, you're driving me insane. He goes, oh, look, a hitchhiker with a beard and a gun and a dog. I think we'll pick him up. Uh, maybe he'll take you uh, out of this mood you're in. He goes, he looks like a nice guy. And Hank's like, no, no. He goes, we can take the dog. He goes, no, he'll lick your face. You'll feel better. <laughs> Poor Hank. He's like, no, 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 no. Don't you like dogs? So they finally pull up to Cotton's house, which is a much smaller house than I thought it would be. I yeah, thought yeah. Cotton would have, well, number one, I thought it would either be a trailer house or it would be a big house. One or the other. Oh, I always envisioned him in like a, Really poor, like, shotgun house. Uh, that's true, too. Yeah, I guess that could be it. Uh, I'm but surprised they pull- he still doesn't, like, piss outside in an outhouse. <laughs> well, we don't know that he doesn't. Well, uh, <laughs> I doubt he's got an outhouse. He, he probably, probably just pisses outside. He's stairs now, yeah. Yeah, and so uh, they pull up at Cotton's, and they go up to the door, and you're first late. thing Cotton has to say you're is late. you're late. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hank's really trying to play the good kid here, and he's like, Dad, it's good to hear your voice. Still blind, huh? Are, Are you, you faking? faking? Are you faking? And then yeah. he just punches him right in the gut. Right in the gut. Either you're blind or you're slow. I believe both. <laughs> I believe both. Yeah. Let's oh, see selling. <laughs> he said, yeah. uh, that's so the guy who drove me here. Gary Kaz- Kasner. Happy Hanukkah. Yeah. <laughs> I serve yeah. with one of your tribe in the Pacific named of Brooklyn. You know him? He goes, I know a Joe Brookstein. <laughs> that's says, him. That's him. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Get a tree, boy. <laughs> Let's go get a tree. Uh, he goes, Dad, I got to take your shoulder from here. He goes, hands off, girly. I didn't find a bunker, bunker full of horny privates to let you cop a feel. And then he shoots a damn tree in the yard. Like multiple times. Which is bang, 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 bang. There's this Christmas tree. Over, he yeah. shot it to death. And it's not even really a Christmas tree. It's like a branch with some sprigs on it. Yeah, yeah. it's literally it's, small. It's like a, it's like the Charlie it's like Brown tree. It's like the top tree. of a tree. Yeah. He says, uh, you know, Dad, it's like old times being here on the holidays. Hank's trying to make the best of it, which yeah. he always does around always. his dad. Always tries to make Painfully the best so. of it. Painfully so. He says, uh, I got to say, I really like, and Cotton just right in the middle of his sentence says, uh, have you ever been a, you've been a yeah, show filler all your life, Kasner? He says, I'm visiting with Tilly, just that I'd help out. Tilly. Tilly. My old yeah, Tilly. My old Tilly. And then Hank's like, uh, you know, you don't want to mention it. You know, he doesn't want to talk about it. And, and Cotton's like, my sweet God, is she still around? She's too old for me 20 years ago. I don't know what she told you she was, mister, but that odometer's done rolled over. That odometer's done rolled over. Hank's like, Dad, it's Christmas. And then matter what day it is, Gary, you don't talk about her like that. Yeah, you know, Gary pissed. gets a little pissed off. Yeah, Gary's real mad. He really defended her. Yeah, he goes, it doesn't matter what day it is, you don't talk about her like that. Tilly's a great, a wonderful woman, and all you did was dump on her. Shame on you. And uh, he goes, if... <laughs> I catch you talking like that, I'll kick your ass. And he goes, all right, I'm backing down. Which is weird, right? One man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> it's a really shitty thing to say. Hey, One I'll man's trash is another outside. man's treasure. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's really weird to see Cotton just like immediately back down. You know? Immediately. I guess, I mean, Gary's not small. Well, he's just a mouth. Yeah, he really is, I guess. Most of the time, unless he's at the hibachi kicking. <laughs> melting his shoes yeah, on the hibachi. His shoes, yeah. Much, much later. Uh, they are back in the truck, uh, and uh, <laughs> he's a loose cannon. We'll put it that way. Like he's he unpredictable. You don't know if he's going to sit there and just laugh it off and yeah. then insult you instead, yeah. or if he's going to stand up and dance all over a hot grill. I mean, you never know with the guy. <laughs> it's one of and my And that's favorites. what that's one of the things that I actually like about Cotton, which I don't really, I don't think he has a lot of redeeming qualities, but his oh, unpredictability. God, no. I yeah, he is just, unpredictable. Yeah, like you Brandon, never know whether he's going to like somebody or like br- riding the horse into Bobby's birthday and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like Napoleon Dynamite or uh, <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte, not Dynamite. Yeah. Well, yeah. a little like Napoleon Bonaparte. Yeah, Dynamite. Dynamite, yeah. I guess. He says, uh, except uh, for it'd be a llama. Yeah, that would be a llama. What, what was the llama's name? Oh, uh, <laughs> Tina, you fat lard. Tina, yeah, you fat lard. Come get your dinner. Come get your dinner. Come get your dinner, Tina. So we see. Uh, welcome to our Napoleon Dynamite uh, podcast. Uh, we see Hank. Uh, he goes back out to the truck where That's Gary's had market. Uh, you know uh, the, the Boy Meets World <laughs> crew got together and did a podcast. Oh, really? Yeah, they're going Boy through Meets podcast? doing. Uh, that's what it's called. Actually, is Boy Meets podcast. Because they didn't call it that. Uh, that's a, or, it's a national or, uh, emergency. Or, uh, I think it might be Boy Meets podcast or world or, or some, something along those lines. Yeah. And uh, they just go through episode by episode, yeah. but they talk about like the behind the scenes stuff and how oh, yeah. they felt about the episode. Well, it's like the, stuff like the that. office ladies or anybody else, you know? Yeah. And uh, Eminem's daughter has also started a podcast. Oh yeah. Doing her own thing. 
but nine with, mile. with one of her best yeah nine mile <laughs> with one of her best friends from childhood that she kind of vicariously got to live this crazy life oh i don't doubt just that. from I an average su- like she was like an average kid from an average suburb yeah. who knew Haley before knew eminem was even eminem you know huh. they, like before he was even as big as he was like because Haley was cool. young when they met yeah that's kind of cool yes uh so uh he makes it back out to the truck where gary's waiting for him uh gary being the nice guy that he is he says you know you didn't have to leave early on my account yeah he said no problem no problem you know because hank's ready to go i mean yeah he's, he, 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 he didn't even like really want to go down no, there it was didn't. just an escape for just a moment like he, if there wasn't all that weird stuff going on it was just yeah, his mom had came yeah. he probably wouldn't have went down there probably not it was just an excuse to get the hell out of there but the funny thing is like even before they leave you still hear uh cotton inside yelling going nuts you know, on dd where's, where's my eggnog bring eggnog. my eggnog and we never hear anything from dd never mean, generally nothing in this one barely yeah. ever anyway she doesn't have very many lines ever so hank is starting to question gary you know where are we we're not home yet gary says he's taking him to a different place uh he's hoping that he can help him get his sight back at this new place and hank's like uh no i've already seen the doctors he says well no it's not medicine it's faith faith and so uh Hank, I mean, Hank is ultimately a nice guy. I don't understand this, like how he answers either. Cause he goes, <laughs> no, that's really nice of you to offer to share your Jewishness, Jewishness. with me, but I really don't walk that way. Uh, <laughs> like what the hell does that even mean? Hank? Gary's like, uh, Hank's so uncomfortable. He doesn't like his sentences don't make sense sometimes. They no, they weird. really don't. Yeah. He just says, uh, you know, Hank, trust me. And Hank fires back with, it's nothing personal. I'm just not crazy about the idea of my God seeing me in your God's temple. <laughs> oh, yeah. He says, Hank, I wouldn't take you to the temple without telling you. He said, well, then where are we? What's going on? He says, I know you didn't poke yourself in the eye. It's not hard to figure out what happened. You saw me and your mother in the kitchen. And I like this. I like how he words. He goes, <laughs> I'm not flattered that it made you go blind, but obviously it's something psychological. I'm with not you. flattered that it made you go blind. Yeah, he's probably not flattered either. <laughs> so the next thing we hear is the TV preacher in in person. Uh, welcome, brothers and sisters and all your prayer partners tuning in at home. Welcome to the Canvas, Canvas Cathedral. Cathedral. So did you ever have to go to uh, those type churches, the ones that are outside under a tent, like revivals Fortunately, and stuff like that? not. Like I got a lot of choice yeah. when I was a kid and what yeah. churches and things I wanted to go to and explore. Yeah. And uh, if they would have said, hey, you want to come to my church? And they would have, like I would have showed up and it would have been outside. Yeah. I would have like been like, oh, oh, it's outside. I didn't know it was this kind of church. Y'all have fun. <laughs> I'll, uh, you know, invite my, me to the uh, next one. <laughs> my uncle was a Baptist preacher. But he was one of those part-time guys. Like, he held down a full-time job, and plus he was a preacher on top of that. And we ended up going to a lot of those freaking revivals like that. You know, I take it back. When I was a practicing believer, I yeah. did go to the church underneath the bridge. <laughs> oh, really? When it was, like, very, because they, yeah, here you know, when they town, very first, like, started out. Here in town, we have a church that meets under I-35. Yeah, underneath uh, the interstate. And, and, well, I don't think they're allowed to meet there anymore. But, but it's all constructioned yeah. up right now. But, but they actually have a physical office. I don't the, know if they have a physical building, but I know they have an actual, like, office. The cool thing about them is they served a lot of the homeless population and stuff like that. You oh, know, they would serve really food and out. stuff. Yeah, too. yeah, they would yeah. serve food and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and they would do uh, different, you know, drives and projects. Believe, and stuff like that. believe with them or not, they are good people. For yeah, doing yeah, yeah, what yeah. They, they were they were doing some good yeah. stuff. This uh, episode brought to you by Church Under the Bridge. Uh, so uh, <laughs> sponsored Hank. by Man Under the Bridge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's Josh. Uh, so uh, uh, Hank is uh, a little taken back here. He's a uh, Canvas Cathedral, the big TV church on the highway. And Gary, taking Hank at his word. <laughs> yeah, you thinks, said it was your favorite. it's his favorite, yeah. And he says, you brought me here. And then we hear the preacher again, uh, we're celebrating a special birthday. I can't tell you how many times I heard this kind of speech around Christmas at a Baptist church growing up. Man, you've really been through hell. Uh, he <laughs> says, we're celebrating a special birthday today. Does anyone know his name? He's almost 2,000 years old, but he's still going strong. I think we should give him a round of applause because he's working on his birthday. I want to give a shout out to two uh, two uh, people, <laughs> the Gentries. When I was a kid, yeah. I used to go to the Bellmead First Baptist Church. Okay. And... Uh, I was too rambunctious to go to the kids' church. Every yeah. time I went with the kids after they did yeah. a little singing and stuff, and then yeah. they would send the kids off. Sure. Uh, I was too rambunctious to go with the kids. 
So they would leave me with this. There was this uh, older couple who were teachers. They were actually teachers at Conley <laughs> I at one you were point. Say they leave me with this old guy. Well, they left me with these two old. Well, I sat with them, you know, in the pews or whatever while they were doing the sermon. But there's a but big they would difference. Bring activity Rusty. books for me. There's a big difference, Rusty, in you saying they left me with this couple or they left me with this old guy. <laughs> well, they left me with this old couple, <laughs> but they would things. bring activity books for me, so I never would listen to the sermon yeah. or nothing. I would sure. just be doing like my ABCs and one two threes and yeah. math and stuff like that, and they would just bring me, and that's all I would do. I would have to sit through big people church. And, uh, what I would do is I love to draw and, and make things. And so I would take the little offering envelopes and I would use a pen to cut it into little pieces and put together little men and all kinds of stuff. I, mean, oh, I, I would, just I would like crafting. sit there and just make stuff the whole time. Yeah. I'd make too much noise doing that. So I'd get, I'd get elbowed in the ribs. Uh, and so, uh, Hank, Hank responds to the big, uh, Oh, by the way, I've been there many times when they bring out a happy birthday cake to Jesus. And we sing happy birthday. Never. We sing happy In birthday to Jesus. My church. And then somebody blows that. out the candles. I did go to church for a long time and I never, the only snacks that we got were the, <laughs> the cheap crap wafer. Yeah. And then the little bit of grape juice. So you're talking about for the, the, uh, what do you call that? Passover or whatever yeah, it is. It's I don't know. It's a Baptist it's the, thing, uh, whatever it is. Because it was at a Baptist church where it used to happen. I don't know. It's not communion, obviously. Well, it is. It's like it's communion. Like communion. But they, call it they do the else, bread. Yeah. They they give the same. You know. You know. Yeah. Bread is the body. Blood is the yeah. yeah. Life or whatever. Which is so weird. Yeah. It they, is. They think that it, it turns into flesh. Uh, but hey, if you believe it, good for you. If that helps. Uh, so Hank is like, uh, you know, I don't really believe in all this faith healing. Cause that's what this is. This is a super faith like healing, faith yeah. healing, slap you on the head. Like you said, you know, snakes and yeah. Well, I don't know if tongues. it's snakes, but uh, yeah, snakes definitely tongues. tongues and... Yeah. Uh, he says, I don't really believe in this faith healing stuff, but it's a really nice gesture. He says, I don't get it. I've been, I haven't really been that nice to you. And you know, it's nice of Hank to realize that he's kind of been a turd. Yeah, yeah, Gary yeah, yeah for sure. And Gary's like, you know, enough, enough. I do because I love, I love your, your mom, mom. which is mom. super nice of Gary also. Hank says, well, she's very fond of you too, and it's not such a bad thing, I'm beginning to think. And so here's that moment that we get in every King of the Hill episode. Hank's turning. The you know, aha. And this is the the feel good about yourself yeah. moment. And well, uh, that's the deal is, is like the, the whole <laughs> gesture is like his friends don't even do nothing like that for him. But the yeah. whole gesture of the fact that this, you know, his mom's boyfriend took him to somewhere yeah. just because he said like, can't give a damn Absolutely. left or right about that yep. building and go in there. But he, he, uh, he took him there as a, a gesture and it was I, a gesture that hangs a man about gestures and principles and old school, is, you yeah. know, uh, man to man kind of activity stuff like this. Uh, absolutely. And I, I, I made another note here, uh, and it just says Hank's crazy eyes because at this moment, his eyes, Hank's eyes kind of look like, uh, the, yeah, <laughs> it's just googly eyes on a puppet or something. <laughs> uh, and Gary reaches over and starts hugging Hank, which is, is really nice. But Hank's like, Hey, no fair. I didn't see you coming. Uh, you got your jollies by now, but then you see Hank's arm kind of go, go, go around, around yeah. Gary and give him a hug back. Uh, and then we get the preacher again. He's healing the cripple today on his birthday. He's healing the blind today on his birthday. And then Gary pipes up. He says, hey, I got a blind man here. He says, is this man your son? He says, I'd like to think maybe one day. Uh, and then Hank's Hank finally agrees with it and says, yeah, well, I guess that'd be an all right way to be thinking. Yeah. And he says, blindness, leave this man. And then all of a sudden Hank can see before he gets smacked he in the head <laughs> right before, right before he gets smacked in the head. Yeah. And Gary's like that a boy, I know you could. And then uh, we get the preacher again. Amazing grace. He was blind and now he sees. We'll be right back after, after these, these messages. messages. <laughs> yeah. It goes to commercial love. break. Yeah. I just love how he goes right into the commercial break. Yeah. Uh, and so now we're back in the alley, back at the alley. I like this scene right here too. Cause, uh, as he's walking up, they're all clowning him and stuff like that. And, uh, I don't know. I can't remember who says it. It's Dale first. Dale, yeah. Hey Hank, you're not wearing any pants. And then, uh, <laughs> well, that's Bill. Dale, oh, that's Bill. Dale oh. says, Hey Hank, how's the weather? Oh, yeah. I'll oh, skip right, the line. My bad. And then Bill goes, Hey Hank, you're not wearing any pants. And then boom, Howard goes, Hank got that dang old stick, man. Even though walking like he can see man's a little spooky, man. <laughs> 
And then they're like, hey, Hank's got his sight, man. Run, get out of here. <laughs> and they all take off running. That's it. That's how it ends. Uh, Hank, uh, he he told him he'd kick ass as soon as he could see it, and that's what he's about to do. Oh, he's about to go stomp a mud hole in everybody, yeah. So we get our uh, we get our credits, and uh, the nice thing through this credits is we get our uh, Christmas, what was supposed to be lunch, is now dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody's sitting around, and they're really enjoying this big meal that Peggy made of dry turkey, I'm assuming. And this is, I really like this. This is a really odd in the very ending of it was really, really odd. This little part right here, because you can hear Carrie. Like, you want to say something good? Put the mashed potatoes with the grandparents together. <laughs> so he's like doing like an AS. <laughs> and then, oh, and then Bobby. So much. Bobby's yeah. like, so moist this turkey, turkey is. is. And it's then, a special occasion. Mm, you can have another piece. <laughs> Look, I wonder who's going to eat that. You're going to eat that. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It's like AMS, it ASMR. Is. It's very good. Which, it's uh, a good episode, man. We it's, should have an ASMR podcast. We should uh, create an ASMR version so should, we can release it. It should ASMR just version. be us doing Boomhauer as don't ASMR. Don't put the dangle, dangle on the don't dangle, nails, man. Dangle, don't put nails, man. <laughs> don't put the dangle Gatorade, man. <laughs> All right, Mike Judge, we just gave you a million-dollar idea, man. Women done, yeah. <laughs> he said, don't put dangle, butt hole. <laughs> man it was a good one that was a good episode yeah, yeah it. it's a lot of fun to watch uh again i just can't get over hank's crazy eyes they're just so great yeah and uh appreciate everybody again you Absolutely. know you guys are pushing us to, to to new heights on our on our listeners yeah man we're doing well we're doing well doing we appreciate well. Uh, all the support from everybody billions could, of listeners oh uh, yeah billions 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 <laughs> We're getting there though, We're man. There, it's, though. We, uh, we, it. we got a loyal audience. We uh, our, our audience has started to grow. We can watch those numbers, which is super important to me that that you guys share and uh, tell people you like this. And you know, I <laughs> there is nothing more fulfilling than getting a message from somebody who listens to this and says, "Man, I really enjoyed that episode," or "You're my favorite podcast," or or like, you know, you make a amazing. you make a hard day better when Man, I'm you know I'm, I'm struggling at work and stuff so like that. Nice. And that's why we wanted to try to give y'all a second episode because I know yeah. that, that there's a few of you out there that have uh, contacted me personally and told me how much you enjoy yeah. getting to listen to it first yeah. thing on a Monday morning after the weekend, and it makes the the Mondays better. Well, I know Friday is usually a good day, so I hope it makes your Friday even better when we start Absolutely. releasing. Uh, or maybe you get a double on Monday or maybe you yeah. double up on Monday Who however knows. you want to do it it'll be up to you how to how you listen to it but we'll definitely uh, yeah, we won't we're going to trial it for a little while and see if you guys like it if you guys like yeah. it then we'll, we'll we'll stick with it as, as best as we can and uh, that'll yeah. be Mondays and Fridays uh, from the release of this episode it'll be on Mondays and Fridays until until like it. Monday, 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 hang on Bucky's butt hang on Bucky's butt alright man uh, this was fun it was. All right. Where can they find us? They can the find way? us at B W A A A K O T H <laughs> on all social media. That's TikTok. That's Facebook. That's Instagram. That's talk. Twitter. Uh, I'm going to try to start posting a little bit more. I've slacked off on posting and you guys have let me know. Uh, well, you've been busy. Yeah, I've been a little busy. There was one guy though that was like, oh, I didn't know a new episode had been released because yeah. I didn't I yeah. didn't announce yeah. that a new yeah. episode had been released that week. I forgot to, Which I didn't have a chance to. I can fix that for you. If you'll hit that subscribe button on whatever podcast player you got, yep. uh, it'll automatically, it'll automatically drop, in drop in there. So yeah, you just hit subscribe and, uh, and that's on any of the platforms. Yep. So they all have their own option to put it in your favorite list or whatever it may be. Podcast uh, getter, podcast got dropper but whatever, whatever they're, you use. whichever one you use i use google podcast which i'm about tired of i like spotify right. i've used i've been a really big spotify and then a yeah. lot of our downloads do come from spotify the majority oh, yeah absolutely. over half of our downloads come from spotify absolutely. so and we I, know a lot of you guys because i push the spotify i need to just link start a lot. listening on spotify to everything uh, i use spotify premium and i've used spotify since spotify was an app because Ooh, la la, spotify premium I, like i've been using spotify for yeah. years and yeah. years at this point yeah. so it's english uh, right wasn't it english didn't it start in England? I'm not really, I don't know. I think know. Spotify started in England. I don't know where it started, but, but it, anyway. is, it is, to me, it is the superior service yeah. for everything because I get all my music, I get all my playlists. You get a fresh playlist on Monday they give you for oh. like your Discover Weekly based oh, on cool. your week of listening. And then on Fridays they give you like a release radar, that which is all new music from the week. I hope you're listening to this, Spotify. Go. Yeah, I hope we'll you are too, Spotify. Cause, drop uh, some knowledge. We on use people. Spotify's uh, service uh, to release our podcast, Megaphone. Yeah, yeah so. Megaphone is owned by Spotify, and that that was not a paid endorsement. 
Or it's not a paid endorsement, but it could be. If you want to check out any other uh, of our shows, you can go to roguemedianetwork.com, which just got a big facelift. And uh, yes, beautiful. please check out some other shows. we got uh, we got some really exciting stuff coming. So we'll see you next time, guys. I'm Tanya. I'm Tanya. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Hey, Cricket customers. Max with ads is included with your Cricket $60 unlimited plan at no additional cost. Nice. Max is the streaming platform where you can watch Scoob, Meg 2 The Trench, The Nightmare on Elm Street Collection, and so much more. Remember me. Just log in with your Cricket username and password to experience Max on all your favorite devices. we never seen this before. Max, the one to watch for a good scream with Cricket. Yeah! Phone plan streams and standard definition. Programming subject to change. Fees, terms, and restrictions apply. See cricketwireless.com for details.